If you have a funnel or are building a funnel and there are multiple offers, you need to be really careful about how those offers interact so it doesn't mess up your average order value. So it doesn't like take money out of your total dollars per customer. This is one of those stories where I have to be careful as I tell it because I don't want to like I don't want to tell too much proprietary client information, but um, but I think that I can share it with you with enough detail that you'll get all the value out of it, um, even if I have to hide some specifics. So I was talking to a guy recently as part of a copy review, and he was explaining to me, like we went through the copy, we went through all of that, and part of what I always do is I always look at the offers and what's the offer. And then I ask the important question, like, are there upsells? Are there, are there more things that people are buying after this? And he was explaining to me the different uh, moving pieces in that funnel. And we were looking and we were saying, okay, here's the upsell and it has whatever take rate, like uh, it has whatever percentage of people who are getting it, but it felt kind of low. And he was wondering if there was ways to increase it. And actually, the, the sales message for the upsell was, was pretty good. Uh, without going into it line by line to improve it, I thought it, was, I thought it was fairly good. The challenge came that I recognized that there was a bonus. There was a bonus in the original offer that if I bought the original offer and I expected to be getting this bonus... I would actually not feel like I had a need for the upsell offer, at least not immediately and not in a way where I felt like, oh, I need to get this before it's gone, right? Um, what was happening is he was taking, like the upsell offer was designed to essentially give, like do a bunch of work for you, right? which a lot of good upsell offers do that. They like they get you the result with way less work. But the bonus on the initial offer that I said probably needed to be changed or removed, it was like you took all the work that the upsell offer would do for you and you just kind of outputted it into the bonus, right? And so if I got this bonus, I would feel like, oh, all this work was just done for me. I can just go there and I like I don't need the upsell. And so my suggestion, and it has yet to be tested, so it could have been a terrible suggestion, but uh, my experience suggests that it's probably a pretty good suggestion. My suggestion was significantly change or kill the upsell on the first offer. And we actually came up with a great idea for how to significantly change it. Uh, significantly change the bonus on the, the first offer such that when they the person arrived at the upsell page, they would actually be predisposed to want the upsell. Oftentimes what happens with our initial offer is we solve one problem and create another. So we introduce someone to, like in this case, we introduce someone to an opportunity, but there are steps to pursuing it. And the upsell offer then can help someone go through those steps to pursuing it. So I understand this opportunity and like what I need to do now make it easier for me, right? And so what we actually did is rather than like handing this, the, the buyers of the initial offer the output of the upsell on a silver platter, what we did was we said, if somebody was going to do all this work themselves, what are they going to do? Like, what, what is that going to look like? And what, what would make it slightly easier for them to do all this work themselves? So it's high value. Like... I'm gonna to have to go out and do a bunch of research, um, and so let me let me um, know where I need to go to do that research, right? So we instead of like doing the research for them, we showed them here's where you need to go to get the research. Like that became the new bonus for the first offer, 
And then the upsell is, hey, we've done the research for you and this tool will actually like it will actually get you that reason it delivers that research to you on a silver platter and so you have to think really carefully as you're structuring offers and actually like as a as a copywriter uh one of my roles as a copywriter when i work with clients is in this more consultant role where i step in and based on my experience i say like hey uh, i don't know that this is the, the, this offer makes sense. So it's not just like, oh, Roy, can you write a sales page for us? It's Roy, like what's, what's going to get us the most leads, customer sales and profits here? What's going to get us the best um, scalability and order value on our funnel? What do the different offers need to look like? And any great copywriter will actually come in and before they even are really deciding to write copy, they'll sit down and say, does this make sense? Does this not make sense? How can we adjust this offer so that it's more compelling? Like, how can we shine the spotlight on a different element of the offer that makes it um, that makes it more appealing? And a great copywriter will think about these things long before they write copy. And if you want to be highly effective in direct response as a copywriter or an offer owner, a business owner, you need to be thinking about all these things too. It's not just the words you put on page or the creative. Uh, the traditional rule from direct mail was that the list is responsible for 40% of the results. So putting it in front of the right audience, the offer is responsible for 40% of the results. So having an offer that actually connects with that audience in an important way. And then the creative, the copy was only 20% of the re results. And of course, like in any given offer, you want 100% and um, it may vary a little bit, right? But the idea, the trend, the, 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 the principle is correct. That a better offer to a better audience is going to perform better even with not as good of copy. And if you want to make a big improvement in your conversion rate, in your order value, that sort of thing, that you should actually pay attention to the offer. You know, like it's as a copywriter, as a, as a marketer, you can provide way more value to the client by adjusting the offer than by just putting new creative in front of their audience. So what do you think? Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know on a scale of one to 10, how valuable you found this and why. Also click that like button before you go so you get more content like this delivered to you and so the magical algorithms of the internet know to share it with more people like you who will find it valuable. You can certainly share it with folks directly and subscribe before you go. You can subscribe here. Also go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com to get my daily emails Monday through Friday, including these videos and exclusive content for email subscribers. And if you want me to actually take a look at your business, at your funnels, at your marketing, um, you can certainly check out the link below to work with Roy and there's a form to fill out and you can let me know what's going on in your business and we can figure out if it's a fit at all for me to work with you and to help you get more leads, customer sales, and profits from your marketing. My name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Thanks for watching. Uh, I always aim for that 10 out of 10 value. I hope I've delivered it here and I look forward to seeing you again in your next video issue. See you soon, bye.